Can you even call yourself an unoriginal YouTuber if you haven't done this video? I don't think so. Hello my fellow gods and goddesses, welcome back to my channel, my name is Heather and today I am reacting to your unpopular bookish opinions. <laughs> So we all know this video. We all know what this video is all about. I tweeted what are your unpopular bookish opinions and you guys gave me your answers. So here I am going to react to them to see if I agree, if they're actually unpopular, and if you're valid or not. So we got first, first one, first, first one, first one, first one. Liking every book you read shouldn't be looked down upon because aren't we all just reading because we love to read? Hmm, this is a very interesting one because I don't think it's bad to love every book you read, but I do think it's necessary, especially if you do, if you are a reviewer, to read critically. And that doesn't necessarily have to influence your enjoyment of it. Like, it can still be a five-star book and you can still recognize that there are flaws in said book. Um, I do think it is necessary to, at least if you are a reviewer, to review critically. So I don't think that necessarily um, rejects the tweet because I don't think it's looked down upon. I just, I can't, I personally can't say I could trust that reviewer if they just give every book they read five stars. Will I judge them for doing that? No. But will I pick up one of their books that they have rated five stars? Probably not solely on their recommendation, if that makes sense. Rainbow Rowell books are not good. Based on the one book I read, which is Fangirl, which I hate, and I have a rant review on my channel for it, I agree, but I can't say all of her books aren't good because that's the only one I've read. But her writing seemed okay, but I've also heard quite a lot of it about her other books that are not great and are problematic so that opinion is there and I don't know if it's unpopular or not but it's it's definitely an opinion. Clary Frey is annoying. Yes, I don't think that's unpopular. I think everybody can agree that Clary is so annoying. Clary and Jace, like the Mortal Instruments would be so much more interesting if it was from Isabelle's point of view. And that's the tea. Uh, love triangles are my everything. I like love triangles. I don't have any any problem with it. I think it's just because I have and we have as readers just become so used to it. It's kind of like the norm. It's kind of like when you go into a book that has a love triangle, you know what's gonna happen. You know, you know the deal. It's familiar in that sense. And I really don't mind them. They're never really that annoying to me. I can't think of a book where it ruined, it was ruined because it had a love triangle. So I really don't think it's that big of a deal as a lot of people make it out to be and I do think that is an unpopular opinion because that's like one of the tropes that everybody says they hate are love triangles and I just don't fall into that boat. Even if it's a bad love triangle, like even if it's a Edward Jacob love triangle where Jacob had no chance whatsoever, I still, I'm like, whatever. I don't really care. The writing in Lord of the Rings is little, is literally unbearable. The story would be fine if Tolkien hadn't shredded it into a million tiny details. I haven't read Lord of the Rings because I'm not an intellectual, but see this is hard because Tolkien created the fantasy genre, so I can't say that his writing is unbearable. But I also haven't read it, but I know what you mean on the meticulous nature of it because I am aware that he does describe very meticulously like non-important details whatsoever. But yeah, I, I can't really comment on this so because I haven't read it, but there's the opinion. You guys can disagree or agree with it in the comments below. Slowborn romances are so boring and too slow 90% of the time. I do not agree. I love slow burn romances and honestly the slower the better because I don't really like slow burn romances where they get together in the same book. 
Vampire Academy kind of does that, but it's not like, it's just a taste. If you guys have read it, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I like... I like slow burn. I don't know. No, I take that back. Even if they do get together in the first book, I still love it. Slow burn romances are so much better in my opinion because it builds such anticipation and angst and tension that you just feel for those that couple so much more than if they just get it on in the first chapter, which don't get me wrong, I could fall for a couple that gets it on in the first chapter as well, but I love me some slow burn romances, so I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. That is, I think that's an unpopular opinion though. I feel like a lot of people really love slow burn romances. Illuminate isn't worth the hype. I disagree. I gave that, I gave Illuminate three stars. I hated the ending. You guys know, I've talked about it all the time where I thought the buildup was nice and, uh, but the ending was just trash. I'm not a sci-fi person, but I think Illuminate is 100% worth the hype because of the unique storytelling aspects of it. And I haven't read the other two of the trilogy. Um, actually, my dad has, which that's cool. And he his criticism is that every book is pretty much exactly the same plot, just with different characters. I can't agree or disagree on that point because I haven't read them. But I think the way the story is told is so unique. I really loved that part and I thought it was super interesting. I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. I, I think Illuminate is worth the hype. People can watch the movie before reading the book. It's not that big of a deal. I wouldn't say that it's a big deal. Like I'm not gonna judge you if you watched the movie before reading the book, but I know personally I can't do that. I can't watch a movie or watch a TV show and then read the book for that I have to do it the other way around uh, because in my mind I already know like the major points that happen so having to read and get to the end result of those like major events is really really boring for me so no I don't think it's a big deal I know personally I just can't do that so yeah not strictly bookish but the supernatural super powered metaphor for racism oppression has never been that girl that shit has never worked and it really needs to be retired yesterday I don't know entirely what you mean I don't know if this is what you mean so Monty you'll have to comment down below and I'll like ping your comment or whatever is it like when a character or like a person who has superpowers is like a minority and like is looked down upon kind of like X-Men is that what you mean where it's like they're like oppressed from like the overall population I'm not sure if that's what you mean but I agree because I feel like you're making a good point that I would agree with I just don't exactly know if we're thinking about the same thing but if we're thinking about that I think I agree because I think it is a just a cop-out of authors to like make a comment on oppression and racism without being direct about it. Minorities have deserved the right to have authors be direct about it, if that makes sense. It's 2019, we're eight, we should be able to talk about topics like that in a direct sense that gets the message across and isn't just like hidden away behind flogs of similes and English words, language that I don't know the terms for. Yeah. I actually really love love triangles and personally I liked on the come up more than the heat you give again yeah I really like love triangles I agree I haven't read either on the come up or the heat you give but that's an opinion and she said it folks I don't like a single Laney Taylor book and don't understand why others tolerate them I have not read a single Laney Taylor book but from what I know about Laney Taylor she has very very flowery very metaphorical symbol symbolic writing style that if you don't like flowery writing you're not gonna like her books again haven't read any of them but overall consensus that's usually what the deal is with her work so that's probably why you like them and that's probably why other people like them but again i haven't read any of them so who's to say daisy jones and the six was boring as fuck and i felt like i had wasted my time reading a biography of a band i didn't know except instead of hearing their music and in interviews <laughs> to look into it was a fake band and a fake story would have worked out so much better as a novel <laughs> 
I don't think it would have been better as a novel. I'm going to have to disagree with that. I think the interview format was a good route to go. I don't think I have much to comment on this one. I think the interview format was a good route to go. Could it have been better as a novel? I think it could have been. Um, maybe how it was in Daisy or in Seven Husbands where it was some part interview but most of the part it was just retelling of the past. I think that could have worked as well but I also like the interview format at least if you listen to the audiobook it's better. In the fake band part, I like the fake history aspect of Taylor Jenkins Reid. I like the fact that she does historical fiction, but it's not, it's like fake historical fiction. And I personally enjoy that type of writing style that she, and storytelling that she has come up with. Just because a book has non-cis straight white characters doesn't make it automatically an awesome book. There is such a thing as bad representation. Yeah. I think everybody could agree with that. Just because you make your book diverse doesn't mean that it's a good book. It just means that it is, it reflects the world as we know it and that's that on that. I don't think a book should be diverse to make it better. I think a book should just be diverse because our world is diverse and that's just realistic and people like to see themselves in books and I know I have been seeing white bitches uh, my entire life and they are nothing like me and they are trash and the book is trash so I feel like non-white people and non-cis people should have the right to see themselves as shitty people as well so that's that on that I guess I don't know if that's unpopular I feel like that's I feel like that's a overall consensus consensus of um readers Harry Potter isn't the best series out there. It's not even the second best. It's literally number four on my list. It's great, but I don't know why fe everyone feels obligated to say it's their fave. I mean, nostalgia. If you think back, like, what's the first series you read? I assume, I'm going to already assume that you have very fond memories of that series and love that series. For me, it was Percy Jackson. I will always love Percy Jackson, but I recognize people who don't have that nostalgia that may not love it as much as me. And that's okay, and that's exactly the same with Harry Potter. Harry Potter made so many people readers. You know, props to JK Rowling for that. I haven't even read it yet, so there you go. That, that There's my dirty bookish confession of the week. But I will never say it's bad, or maybe not I will never say it's bad, but I will never discredit its power for other people and its influence on other people because of that strong nostalgic. Another example of this is Star Wars. I despise the Star Wars franchise. I think it's cliche. I think it's boring. I think it's just doesn't bring anything to the table that we haven't seen already. Can I mention cliche again? It's just the biggest cliche on the planet, pun intended. But because so many people grow up with Star Wars, there's such a nostalgic attachment to that franchise that I feel like is 90% of the reason why everybody loves it so much, but that's tea for another day. Um, but it's kind of the same way. Will Herondale is literally the worst character in this series. <laughs> the audacity. The audacity. All I have- that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. Jordan, you are a member of Audacity and I don't know what else to say about that. Will Herondale is the pinnacle of YA broody men. Not Jace. No, 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 no. Jace doesn't even touch Will Herondale. Thank you and good night. But seriously, like, I know he's broody. I know he's an asshole, but he is the originator of that trope. And he will always be number one of that trope of all time. Nobody else can touch him. Nobody else can come close to him and I have nothing else to say. Jude is too good for Cardin. I haven't read The Cruel Prince, but yes, agreed. From the art I have seen of Jude, wow, am I so gay for her. Who gave her the right? She did. She took all of the rights. She took all of the rights for herself and I am just going to bow down to my queen 
Thank you. Dog earring pages is the most reliable, convenient, efficient way of marking your spot. In my 9,000 years of reading, I've not made a single use of a bookmark. I don't like dog earring pages. It, I'm really weird. I don't care the outside of my book looks like shit, but I want the inside of my book to be like pristine, which doesn't really make all that sense, especially considering how you display books, but that's just a personal thing for me. I don't like dog earring pages. I definitely would prefer to like just not indicate my last marked thing with anything rather than dog ear my page. I don't not a fan, not a fan. The term woman's fiction needs to fucking die. Yeah. I don't mind reading mass market paperbacks. Ugh. Could not be me. I don't like reading them. I still buy them, especially since I do thrift a lot of my books. I do find quite a few mass market paperbacks and I would rather buy a dollar mass market paperback than buy a floppy paperback for full price, but I don't like reading them. They're just not comfortable to read. Mar mass market paperback I read was The Last Wish and I was having to like, because I didn't want to like crack the spine. Um, I still kind of did, but I didn't want to do it too badly because I know I just said that I don't care what the outside of my books look like, but cracked spines, not a fan of. And you have to like turn it like like right angles to read them and it's just no it really doesn't look like a big deal but it is to me i typically can't stand high fantasy especially if it's based on medieval europe well i don't know what to tell you because then you don't have a lot of high fantasies that you can read so it's a good thing that you don't like them because literally all of them are based off medieval europe folks i disagree but that's coming for, from a Europeanist point of view. That is my favorite history to learn about. I love European history. I love European culture. Hello, look at me. I'm white as fuck. Definitely have to disagree with you, but I do agree with the fact that, that the genre is 100% oversaturated with European history or European fantasies. Uh, just That's just society in general. We are just westernized and have way too much involvement with like European stories. I do agree with that, but I still love them. So yeah. I will not read Sarah J Mass. I mean, that's kind of shitty. Not to like uh, hate on this person or who comments this, but how are you just not going to read an author? I mean, unless the author's problematic, which Sarah J. Mass definitely has her faults. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that she's perfect. But unless an author is like did something super shitty, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm not going to read their books. And I feel like there is even a bigger stigma with like authors like Sarah J. Mass, like Cassie Clare, like those really big YA authors. Uh, that have such a big stigma against them. A lot of people just hate on just to hate on them and that's just facts. I'm not saying that this person who commented is one of those people but I don't like A Court of Thorns and Roses. I wasn't a huge fan of Throne of Glass. I stopped reading after Air of Fire but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna ever. I'm, I really want to pick up Crescent City so um yeah I don't I don't agree. All right, we are, I'm getting tired and lazy. So we are just gonna do a few more of these. So the next one, uh, authors don't owe us anything. They don't work for us. I think authors do have a responsibility to, for instance, make their books diverse. It's 2019, I don't wanna read a book with all white straight characters anymore. I don't care if you are a white straight author, I want you to at least attempt to write some diversity in there. And if you can't write diversity, you need to reevaluate your writing. Enemies to Lovers is only good if it's done right. People use it to ex to excuse abusive ships. That is some tea right there. Agree with using it as an excuse for abusive ships, but I also just really love Enemies to Lovers 
and I can't think of an instance where it was done wrong and I still didn't like them. Like, I, it, it could be argued that Wicked Saints isn't a great enemies to lovers because it's another one of those instances where it just happened so quickly and that like bridge between enemies and lovers was just like non-existent. But even then, I still love them, so... I think this is definitely an opinion, and I think it's a very interesting one. You you did that. You did that. And now we're going to end on the most valid opinion possible, even though I haven't read the other series that it's comparing to, but it's the most popular and most valid unpopular opinion of all time, and that is Percy Jackson is better than Harry Potter. Hell, even the spinoff Heroes of Olympus is better also more diverse and that ladies and gentlemen is not only the truth but facts and straight from the bible and i have nothing else to say that's all folks i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below your opinions on these unpopular opinions let me know down below some of your unpopular bookish opinions and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day bye